Ladies and gentlemen, Endless Legend. Anybody who's a fan of Civilization V should definitely check this game out because it's very similar, but it adds a lot of really cool things, and I'll explain that as we go into it. It's just easier that way. If you are familiar with what this game is, you probably want to skip this first episode because this is going to be a lot of explaining for people who have no idea what's going on. And if you've never even played Civ V, I can probably help you out with that too. Worst case, I forget about something, leave a comment. I'll respond. Somebody will respond. Whether it be me or somebody else. We're pretty social around here. This game is only an alpha, so there are a few things missing. A few features, boats are missing, so you can't get from continent to continent. As such, you're stuck with certain terrains, like Pangaea, where it's just one giant landmass or absolutely no ocean. Just all just Great Plains style. And there's only four factions that you can choose from out of eight. But the four factions are pretty interesting. Necrophage is an example being a warfaring tribe, completely incapable of any diplomatic ties at all whatsoever. They're forced to go to war, and they're kind of insecty people, and they're really cool about, like, when their dudes die, it contributes to food. It's really interesting. Very difficult to play for a first time, though. Wouldn't recommend it. I'm actually going to go for probably Broken Lords. Tempting to go with Wild Walkers because they start with the first range unit that you can get they just start with it which is kind of interesting but i'm gonna go with broken lords because they're what i'm most familiar with and that's what you see in the background here and it's what you're gonna see in the loading screen they're just giant suits of armor that have no body inside they're held together with uh i don't even know just some sort of magical energy of some sort or is it dust yeah just energy energy slash spirits wrapped in great suits of armor they're pretty neat i really like them couple interesting mechanics that only they have, which is really neat. Because the factions actually huge differences in this game. And we'll just go 1v1, that's fine. Just kind of showing off the game a little bit. Large, advanced settings, random seats, the only thing I can choose, world wrap. Yeah, sure, the world will be round. Chaotic geometry or hexagonal geography. Let's just go default. No, you know what, let's go chaotic. Why not? And flattened. Yeah, sure, I don't really like mountains. And choose a pretty color. And away we go. And we're in. Now, <laughs> when I said it's a bit like Civ 5, it's exactly like Civ 5. It's extremely similar. Although our unit here is actually consisted of multiple little, like, well, I guess it's a troop of three units that we start with. Two of our basic type warrior dudes that are just straight up stand and fight, and a settler to found our first town. Now, generally you start in a pretty decent spot to start a town, much like Civ 5. And I will click this button down here to show tile output just to make sure. Because these people in particular. Mm hmm. I think we're going to scoot over a little bit, actually. We'll build it here. These people in particular, you really got to watch the yellow currency here. This is called dust, but it's basically gold. It's it's money. And then we got the research points that we do for general research technologies to develop new, um, new materials and stuff like that. And then production to actually build things within our town. And currently, all of these are pretty much being worked, as far as I can tell. You have workers up here that you can move around to sort of emphasize in a particular area. But from what I can tell, there's no way to say, like, you work that tile, you work that tile, like Civ Five, you do that. This game is just kind of, it figures it out for you. You just kind of put an emphasis in something. I only have one dude, though, as you normally would. And you can see that here. Normally, based on the food output, which you can see off to the left side there, it's got exploitation, forest, river. You have plus one food from Trained with River because it's, it's along the river so you get food from like fish and stuff like that. But because we are who we are specifically, this team consumes every little bit of food that you get, basically completely negating it, taking it out of the game effectively. So we don't have to worry about that at all. So these dudes are great for just starting in the desert, really, where there's not really much food. Perfectly okay with that. The currency that we really need though is this guy. We are dust efficient, so it sort of replaces food with dust. Effectively, any tile that would have food has additional dust, I believe it is. 
So this is a good spot to start. Tons of money. And we're gonna need it. We're gonna need all of it. Probably even more. What is that guy way over there? Oh, I have that still on. Okay, never mind. There are special little tiles here, like a die deposit. That is a luxury resource we can't currently do anything with. We got a Delver's Village here, which is actually a city-state type deal. Uh, we haven't quite discovered them yet. If I scoot over a little bit, I think I might be able to. No? Maybe we actually have to, like, go up to them and visit. I don't know. We also have ruins that you start by. You always start by ruins. It's kind of a... kind of a neat thing. There's the die deposit, there's my dudes. Okay, so nothing really else. Last time I started near a actual consumable resource, a type of metal called, um, titanium. And that was, that was really neat. It was like right there, it was awesome. We'll get into that later though. Gotta start a research thing to get our uh, civilization going. And to start, since we use dust all the time for a form of currency and we are founded on a river, dust treasure is a great one. Anything that has a river on it, you get more dust from. Uh, you get a special load of dust if it's like a lake or a sea, but river works just as well. So we're going to go for that straight away. We also start with Empire Mint, which is kind of neat. You start with getting more dust. The other people have to research this, but we start with it, so that's kind of cool. And in return, we have to research our first, mm, second fighting unit, but that's okay. Units moved, research is done, got to start production on a city now. Now, since this is the first place that we founded, you can do a Founder's Memorial. can only have one of these, and it basically dictates this is my capital, which I'm okay with this being my capital. It just gives you a little bit of everything. You'll also notice this little star icon that's up here. This is something that you don't necessarily get from the train, more from your cities, and some of these little city-state people can actually contribute to it as well. There might be... Things you research and buildings that may give you more, I don't really know for certain. But it's basically the diplomatic currency. When you find other people, diplomacy conversations and stuff like that, you spend that to make things succeed. And that is pretty much everything we can do. I actually want to head that way. I wanted to see if I could discover them real quick because they're there and it hasn't popped up the window for me yet so I can explain it. But that's okay. Turn two, you always get a quest on turn two. Quests are in this game, they're not in Civ Five, which is kind of a neat thing. Now, you got a bunch of flavor text up here, the Cliff Notes version down here on the bottom left. Basically, make an army. That's what this is. The Lord's Hero that we started with, I'll go into details about him later, and three infantry units, only started with two, to inspect the Auriga Ruins, or something like that. I don't really know. And we get a reward. Get a cool spear. That requires titanium. Ugh, a lot of titanium. Ugh. Okay, that's fine. We'll go into that later too. Show location though. Okay, quite a bit south. So basically, make a unit, merge him with this, and then head down there. But that reward doesn't really do anything for me until I find titanium, so hopefully I find some pretty soon. Wanted to head over to the ruins. I queued up that action, so by clicking the arrow, I tell them to continue their path toward it. And that's everything for this turn. The dust dredger completed. Awesome. So now, I can build it. We will queue it up. And we'll queue up that mint research that we started with too. Now, there's a lot of things that I'm researching right now, and if I wanted them quicker, I could buy them out right now with dust. More production time required means more dust costs. This in particular costs 63. I get 16 a turn, so it'll eventually kind of sort of pay for itself after a while. Like, I'll get all the money back after a few turns. And I think I might do that just to get on with these things. Or I could save up and make them instant. Uh, kind of whatever you want to do. I do have this guy queued up for production to improve the speed. You could see that if I were to move him over to money to say, Oh, I want to buy it out quicker. I get four more gold per turn, but now it takes six turns to do, so, eh, either or. I could do another dude with 36 dust and put him on production two to speed it up a little more. And I feel like that might be the better thing to do, actually. Yeah, let's actually do that right now. I'll do that. Rather than hurry production on this, I'll actually get another dude 
and put them on the manufacturing. So that only takes three turns and everything gets done a little faster. We'll go for that. I'll need this guy eventually anyway to do Burrow Street, which is how you expand your region of influence. And I also need an additional citizen so I can do a settler so I can make another town somewhere. Oops, forgot to queue up research. Game won't let you end your turn unless you uh, have a research selected at the very least. You can forget to move dudes and you can forget to set up production on your towns, but you cannot forget to do a research. You have to have one of these going at all times. The buying out thing. You can make cheaper with prisoners, slaves, and volunteers. You can make that faster by 25% for units and buildings. So if I wanted to go that route, that's what I would do. And it's tempting to go that route. It really is. But I... I think I'm going to go for public library for more research. Because for me, when I play these games, it's more about infrastructure. I want my, my town to be doing a lot of things every turn. And with public library, you get a lot more research points, which you used to spend on these. It's the research points for research. So definitely going to go with that. That'll be another building that I have to build, but that's okay. I could also do the armor or weapons and armor. I start with armor because that's what we are. We're just giant balls of armor, basically. I think we're the only ones who start with armor, too. But I could do for weapons as well. But again, I need titanium or glass steel, the other metal that you can start near. I have to find those first before I can even do anything with those, so I'm not really concerned about getting them. Yeah, okay, nothing else. Um, we are working on things. I think these guys need to move still. Yep, they're just kind of sitting there not doing anything indicated by this. Move on to the ruins, search them. And here we have a quest. Awaken the creature with a shard of... Uh, and defeat it to get the treasure. Okay, search those ruins with a strong hero, level 4. We don't have that. Which ruins are these? Okay. Okay. And if you forget which is which, you can look on the bottom left and it actually tells you if it's associated with the quest or not. The Legend of the Three being the one I just got, and this guy being the first one that I had, a new beginning. So that's always cool. Would have preferred to get dust, honestly, but that's okay. Now, we did get a sword for a reward that we're supposed to equip with our hero. And I would love to. Whoops, wrong one. That button up there, the fist for unit management. This is where... This is where the meat of the game is for me, because this is where you make a lot of important decisions. My stalwarts being the most basic unit, they start with just basic sword and shield. Let's edit them. We start with basic armor. It doesn't cost any material or money. It just, you manufacture it with manufacturing points. You don't notice they don't start with any. You don't notice they also only cost 88 production. But if I want to improve them, improving their armor in this case, it's plus one shield, but minus one lightning bolt, lightning bolt being the initiative. If I wanted to give them more defense, so they really are frontline soldiers, they're just tanking you know, stand there and just absorb blows, I'd give them a bunch of armor. But you'll notice now the production is 119. It's increased. And as you get nicer pieces of equipment um, with the materials that you would get in research, um, like if I click missing resource, there we go, on armor, because I know what to do with the armor when I have titanium, because we started with that. Um, same with glass steel. I could try to equip these, but you'll notice now that it costs titanium to develop these units. And same thing if I did glass steel. So if you want a really high-end army, you deck them all in the best gear you possibly can. And it would increase production costs by a crap load, but they'd be really good. But I can't really afford to do that. I don't have those metals. That's what I'm looking for. What I can do is switch them over to a two-handed weapon if I wanted to. That could be interesting. But I'm going to stick with the sword and shield. And... Yeah, we could. We could give them just a full set of armor if we wanted to. It destroyed their initiative a little bit, but they get a little more armor. Three more. Oh, four more defense in total. Nah, we'll just keep it simple. And no, you cannot make them naked, unfortunately. 
So we'll leave it how it is at default. About to lose, lose his changes, that's that's fine. Our hero is the only one who can actually use the um, the awesome sword that we got. So we want to head to the academy screen, and that's where you modify heroes. This is the only hero we've got, so we'll inspect him. You got his skill tree for when he levels. He'll level up pretty soon because he just kind of gets experience over time. He's halfway there now. He starts with a full set of armor, basic armor, but armor nonetheless. And we got that sword from that one quest, I believe. Oh no, we have to visit the town first. Okay, never mind. I got it mixed up. We don't have the sword yet. We'll get that though. We have to visit the sword of the high level hero and we can get it and then equip it. But I need Titan Steel. Or Titan Steel? Titanium. Oh my god, World of Warcraft's jumping at me again. Um, We need to get the titanium first, and I don't know where titanium is. I need a lot of titanium too, I think it was four. So basically hold the hold it for four turns and you get four titanium, it grows over time. Is how that works, it's different than Civ V as well. Got another ruins here that I'll check out, we'll search that. Build a... god, it's another quest, my god. More often than not, it's just straight up dust you find. I uh, found a city in a new region, do it within 15 turns. <sighs> okay. Well, I would, but I need to find a spot to expand to first, and I'm going to expand to wherever there's metals, so... I might actually break up this unit and explore here pretty soon. Yep, got it. Okay, so we're constructing, research done, they've moved, okay, and turn. Yay, turn four. Um, yeah, let's, let's break it up a bit. There we go. And can I break it up more? No, I don't think I can. No, okay, I wasn't sure if I could have my hero just on his own or not. You cannot. But now we're broken up into two groups, so we can explore a little further, but we're much, much worse in battle. And there's a new minor faction that we discovered. They, we actually discovered the other one earlier, but the window didn't pop up for some reason. And these are like the city state sized barbarians. Sometimes they'll attack you, sometimes they'll just kind of do their own thing. What you do, though, to get the effect bonus, which doesn't affect me at all because it's food and we don't do food. We do dust instead. But what I would do is attack them, destroy them, and if they're in my influence, rebuild them and then they join us effectively and we get those bonuses and it's kind of neat. But I don't use food, so I'm not too interested in doing that. So the most I would do is destroy them and then leave them. Kind of curious, yeah. Up here it tells you where the villages are. Hostile and could represent the Delvers. Oh, that's them. Yeah, I wish it would tell me that. Nah, well. I don't know what they do if I were to recruit them. Oh, there's another one of them. Those are... Those are the same as them. Okay, so that's more food. Huge potential for food around here. Good, good, and good, and turn. And there we go. Like I said, he gains experience every turn. So he's leveled now, we'll pop over... Oh. Okay. Pop over to here, hit inspect, go into the skill tree and give him a bonus. I could assign him to a town and he'd be a governor of it. And that's what this tree is for. He just makes the town better. This middle tree here is more for exploration and discovering things. The first one improving the uh, reward that you get from the ruins. And the far left is for if you're a sort of a war general type deal. And he improves defense and health and all that good stuff. So, what I think I'm gonna do is I'll probably use him for war. That's what I did last time. Yeah, this, this, this team is really good for war because you can heal them immediately by spending money. So as long as you have money, you're kind of invincible. Mm, to a degree. Unless you just get absolutely slaughtered in battle. But hopefully that won't happen to us. We'll go for Strength of the Wild. Two defense only on the hero though. I can hit it multiple times and I get plus two every time. So up to plus six defense on my hero. But again, that only affects the hero. The next thing that it unlocked though, Iron Taskmaster. It improves the life of the unit. So anybody who's attached to him gets more life. Kind of neat. 
we'll go for apply on that one and leave it as is. We'll probably just move on and get more life for the unit later on, because I'm not too interested in its own defense. I can always just move him to the back lines too. I'll show you a battle mm, later. I could show it to you now by taking him out. Truthfully, I should probably take them out. If I can get up to them. But I really want to find a mineral. Hopefully there's none up here. Because if there are, then we're going to have an issue. Because there's a lot of potential war fighting going on up here. Oh, wait. No, never mind. That's dice. I was going to say, my god, I started next to it and I completely missed it. There's chromatic land. Just an interesting little land type thing going on. It's a bit like sheep, I suppose. Or bananas. You know, it's not really a luxury resource or anything like that. It's called an anomaly. It's just an improved tile, effectively. Oh, forgot research again. Because uh, that popped up when I, put into, when I went into the... Uh, equipment screen thing so we got we got dust dredger and empire mint we got the basic money things this reduces the cost for buying things out which would be definitely cool to have to hurry things up but i'm really tempted to work on advanced alloys so i could get weapons better weapons for seas and rivers yeah more research for all that. Mm, probably not. Because that's really for if you're by a sea. It says center for seas and rivers, but it doesn't really apply much to rivers. Because it says specifically plus two to terrain with water, sea, or like, not river. Uh, but you do get plus three research per citizen on a city. So there's that. This stuff down here is just a general empire improvements, more approval rating and stuff like that. Not too interested in it. I'm thinking I'm going to go for the improved buyout. And until I find materials... Uh, construction completed. I found a memorial finally. Good deal. Okay, close this. Head to town. What are we breaking on now? The dust dredger. Okay, that'll be done in five turns. Could hurry it up. It costs 143 though, and I don't have that much. So everybody's working on production, though. That's cool. Uh, dudes need to move. I think I forgot to move them last turn. Because I hit on turn. Oops. Oops. Go up here. Search. 40 dust. That's normally what it is. is you just get straight up money, not quests. That's okay, though. And there's titanium. I was really hoping it wasn't up here. But it is. I'd like to find glass steel, though. Glass steel is the one I'm interested in. And there's that more vision if I recruit them. Oh, they also give you bonuses for pacified villages. Um, so if I were to destroy them and rebuild them, then anybody who I kill, who I'm not interested in rebuilding, like these two dudes up here because they give me food and I don't use food, I destroy them, they become pacified, and I would get vision bonus for them from these guys. So there is still reason to destroy them. Hmm. Not too interested in vision per se, though. Though that would make winters easier. We'll get into that later, though. We'll leave them for now. There's an earth tower up there. Tons of production and research. And then a uh, approval rating for earth tower being earth tower. It's an interesting thing and people like it. Oh man, that's mineral rich right there. This is a happy little area to build a town, ain't it? If only there was glass steel. Okay, everybody's moved. Research, production. Yep. I bet it's down here. More ruins. Search those. More dust. Good deal. A wine deposit on a river. Dang. A lot of food and dust from that one. All right, we might have to settle for titanium. I'm pretty sure that's what it costs to get that sword anyway. From that one, I believe it was. 